first night, they turn the generator off. I'm just sitting in my sitting in my room, and you can hear the water lapping, you know, on the bank when you're going to sleep, and you can hear the slight little buzz of the mosquitoes around. And you hear the swallows chirping, and then you wake up the next morning, and it's all still there. I was raised by my father after my parents got divorced, and me and my brother were both very young. My dad, he always was working, and I saw that it took a huge toll on him. From the youngest time I can remember, I made it a point for me to like, on the weekends, to try and get us to go out and do something so that he would enjoy it. Whether it was something that I wanted to do or something that he wanted to do, I carried that with me throughout my entire childhood and it definitely brings down my anxiety and my depression when other people are really enjoying themselves. My passion is not fishing, my passion is people. And I tell all of my guides, if you really love to fish, you're gonna be a terrible fishing guide. You need to love people because that's really what it's about. It's not about the fish. Alright, you gentlemen ready? Yeah. Come to the world, to the wild, no place for child. Use my voice to hide. Probably, this fish is probably about as old as I am. I had to learn to get what I need in the dark, empty instincts all gotten me like a beast. Lefty Cray, who was a friend of mine and did a tremendous amount for me and this lodge, would often say that, simply put, the Good News River is the finest stream in all of Alaska and probably the world. That really opened my eyes, uh, having fished on six continents, and fished all over the state of Alaska. I had never seen a river like this uh, anywhere. And having grown up and guided in Michigan, it doesn't hold a candle to the fishing that's going on here. The entirety of the lodge as a whole is this is legitimately a civilization that a handful of people have put in a tremendous amount of effort and money and time to build. That's what Good News River Lodge to me is that little tiny village in the middle of nowhere where everybody is insane about fishing. That, that, <laughs> see, you gotta, you gotta sync it up. And that's the hard part with the new guys, is getting your hand signals and your fucking jargon together. So should we have someone else do it? Because I don't know if I'm gonna fucking push this thing through me. Which way should I go? You're almost there, dude. There you go, Johnny. There oh. you go. Oh, now we're gonna get that on Eric's eye. Sorry, bud. No problem. Thank you. I get along with everybody at camp fairly well, but there's like a core group of guys here that we've all worked together four, five, six, eight years and stuff. And I mean, they've just become some of my best friends. I mean, the people at this camp are fucking weird. They're just, <laughs> they're, 
Everybody's so different, and it's just what I like about it. It's just everybody's got their own quirks. You don't care about what I think. Mm. Finally got all the rods up, too. Check out some is that your Is that your handwriting? It's yeah, that's my handwriting. <laughs> that's so bad. That looks, that looks I normally like write in cursive. That looks like a four-year-old wrote that. I love to fish. I don't have to fish anymore. That's what makes you a good guide, I think is when you feel like you don't have to catch another fish. When I first came to work here, we called Good News Little Saigon. You just didn't go there at night. Uh, a lot of shooting, uh, people getting shot, violent crime. It was very much this clan versus clan, everybody hates each other and they hated the white man. And if I caught your clan in my blueberry patch at blueberry time of the year, somebody was gonna die. We really didn't get along. And, and we got along best if we never saw each other. I actually received an eviction notice for this place saying I had seven days to take mine and get off this island. I'm proud to say that we were able to settle uh, when it was remanded to state court. And instead of taking their knickers, which we were legally entitled to do, uh, I said, gee whiz, let's not take your knickers, that's stupid. Let's bury the hatred and start working together. We've gone from this clashing relationship to now we work together hand in hand to solve problems. They know that my daughter was basically raised here since she was an infant and they realized that I spread my wife's ashes here, which means something, uh, means a great deal of something to the people who live here, that this is our home. And I love it when I come in in the springtime, everybody I meet, welcome home, welcome home. Darling, don't press the world's end it before. Good. Rose with her arm. A lot of people, including my wife, get frustrated at me because I'm constantly helping people. And uh, she's like, well, maybe you shouldn't help this time. And uh, I don't know, I always end up helping people because if the good Lord gives you the opportunity to help them, by God, you better help. So that's the way I'll probably die. Yeah. Yeah. If light sweetly slips through the cracks, can we make up for God called me home tomorrow, I would have had more than my fair share of fish. That's for sure.